So let's move to another tutorial and our set mesh is up and fun. So this is the last in this series of tutorials, let's say, uh, beginner tutorials to introduce some basic concepts. So what we're going to do in this one is that we're going to convert the mesh. So the previous cases we had the mesh in block mesh, so it was quite easy to put the first patch in the top of the boundary list, okay? See so here, we're going to convert the mesh for Fluent, and I'm going to show you the trick how to do it. We have two component meshes. Um, by the way, in this case, we're going to do it later when we have moving meshes, but I just want to show you here. One thing also I want to like to mention is regarding the position of this patch, and I did a lot of benchmarking. So here, what you see, how the interpolation is doing like from airfall to background mesh, background mesh to airfall, just to see if something change happen, if there are problems with the interpolation. So far, I haven't seen any issues, but still it is strongly recommended by the developers to put that patch as the first one. Okay, so let us let me show you what we're going to do here. So as you saw, we have these scripts here. So I'm going to do just the mesh. And actually, let me show you the meshes. I'm not going to... Okay, I have it. So let me enter folder by folder to show you the mesh. So first, we're doing airfall to background. So we have here the mesh, everything there. And let's do here, okay, the conversion. So as you see, it's coming from Fluent. So there is no problem. It can come from any tool. You can use internal tools and so on. So let's take a look, a look at the mesh. So this is what we have. So we created a mesh around an airfall. I look at that. We have a fully instructor mesh, nice mesh, everything there. And here we have the patches, the name is. So let's see what we have. Airfall bottom. What is this? Um, okay. So we will split this surface into two parts, bottom and top, front and back patches. And this one wall airfall, this one corresponds to the overset boundary. So now I'm going to have the background mesh. So the operation is background mesh, region zero, and now I will put the airfall in that one. And you can add more component meshes as you like. We have seen that in the previous video. So now let's do the next step that we know what we have there. Okay, I'm going back to that one, background. So at this point, I haven't changed any name in Airfall regarding all the boundary file. And just to bring it here and to be clear, so we have Airfall, we have the mesh here, poly mesh, and boundary. So the important thing here is this, this files, as I mentioned in previous video, that it's important to have the overset patch here at the top. So this is the Airfall mesh. This is not the important one. Now we move to the background mesh where we should have know that order, which is recommended. So now let me go here, copy. There you go. We have the mesh and now we do the next step. So at this point, and let me launch here Battlefone. Okay. So we should have the two regions. Okay. Oh, I have a mesh, if I will recall. So yeah. I forgot. Okay, so this is the okay, just to show you the background mesh, as you can see, it's another instructor mesh. And let's do the merging. Okay, so you go here, bring the mesh for, for an airfall, and now we're assembling you know, that overset uh, set. And let me go here, apply, and there you go. You have the meshes. And as we saw in the previous video, the standard practice to have similar cells and so on. So that's later you, you can play with that when doing your meshes. And at this point, the next step will be check mesh. So remember that check mesh will compute automatically the regions. Now when we merge, so look at that, we have region zero, region one. I know that region zero, as I'm bringing every mesh here, region zero for me will be uh, the background mesh. So region zero, background mesh, region one, it is the airfall. Okay, and if you want to check that too, let me go to Airfall and we run the check mesh there and look at that, we have the cell count, okay? 
uh, to show you here again this sale count corresponds to that one okay so always the mesh where you are going to bring the background if you're following my saying workflow will be zero so there is no problem and then once you have multiple meshes be careful that you need to know now which one is one don't pay attention to this this is the mesh excuse me so this is not going to affect anything and at this point the next step it is here let me run this the steps here so i'm just changing some names and so on and the next one is sec fields that it will create the regions okay and let's visit those dictionaries okay so i'm here and actually there is a change dictionary i don't recall okay so it's changing the wall airfall assigning overset okay doing the renaming and sec fields look at that is assigning region zero cell id zone id zero zone id zero okay so at this point this is a valid assembly so we need to run the simulation to compute everything so i'm not going to do that step but if you look at the order here bam 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 the overset patch you have it here at the end which is not a problem you have seen you can run your your benchmarking but developers recommend to have this overset patch at the very beginning of the list okay so we have eight patches there and let's Open again Patafon here, and now we should be able to so refresh here, and we should be able to see the IDs. And there you go, you have everything. And as you can, as you want, you can explore the patches there. So how do we change now the order of the patches? Because now here we don't have like in block mesh that you can add that empty keyword and then put there a placeholder to add that. So that's what want to show you here so let me here in background create everything and it's quite easy okay to do that so let me go here copy place converting the mesh and now let's open that boundary file so poly mesh and boundary file so this is very important you should add, so look at that we have here. We add a new patch. This is six. It is overset type. There are zero faces. So there is no confl conflict between this and this. And it's called the name wall airfoil. Okay. So be careful to get that name. Let's be extra sure that I'm getting the right name. And here I have it and um, boundary wall well, is this one. Okay, wall airfoil. So when you do that, and um, just to confirm something, we have it here. Wall airfoil zip patches always come one, two, three, four, five, six, overset, and then it will find this same name that you have in the other boundary. It will put it here and will assign, will leave like this, and then it will change the count. This step is not requiring fluence. So this is another nuance that you have here. And you, it is recommended by the by the uh, developers. It's not compulsory, but just to learn something new. So at this point, let's do the merge. Okay, so we have this. And if I merge here, in this merge step, I should already have the right order. So see that now we have nine. So this is not correct. So I will show you why wall airfall is still zero. And then it added here this. So there is a problem here. And the problem was, okay, I'm probably to follow the steps. It's here that you have this one. You should erase this group also. You should put also overset there, okay? And now here, let's go back here and repeat. So remember, as you have many patches, all the patches, the wall airfall, those overset, give the overset type. And if you have it, have them in groups, erase that keyboard groups. If this is another different, you can put the group overset there. There's no problem. Okay, go here. Increase the counter by one there. Yeah. This one, the name, wall airfall there. Wall airfall, this is overset. 
Cedo, and now let's do here merge and now here we have it right eight patches the first one wall airfall it is overset the number of faces and then you have the rest of the patches the rest of the patches so this is how you you fix this when you are converting from another format or if you have a mesh that for you is impossible to put that keyboard at the beginner and beginning using a snappy or block mesh this is a trick so it's a quite easy trick recommended i always do it okay even if i haven't seen any major problem when i put it somewhere else i always do it as you see it's, it's very easy this small detail you don't have it in fluent okay so this is what i wanted to show you in this case I hope uh, you're following you know, all this idea of overset measures. Remember, use it when you have moving bodies. For me, it doesn't make it to it doesn't make any sense to use it when you have fixed bodies. And also it requires a completely new way of thinking. And we have seen that when we visualize the mesh. Okay, when you are creating meshes, be careful that you should try to get you no know, similar meshes and so on and creating those boundary patches and so on. So here try to get similarity there, the aspect radius and so on. So it is not as easy uh, as people might think. And also, uh, honestly speaking, I started to use these meshes using a structure grids now. So probably they work the best when you are using a structural grids, okay? This kind of methodology. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.